What's going on, guys? It's your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hope everything is great with you. You know, I left a post up recently about doubt, about self-doubt, and you know, that was kind of one of the things that I had really been going through was like I was starting to doubt myself, and I realized I was starting to doubt myself because I was entering a new, you know, time in my life, and this is like a new time for so many different people. You know, you've never been quarantined before. We've never had to live in these situations before. For. So there's like a lot of new stuff happening. So, you know, but I just want to encourage you to not doubt yourself, you know, enjoy this new time in your life because we're learning so much about how strong we actually are and we can get better and get better and get better. So be positive guys and keep going. It is no question that this season of Fortnite has a pretty strange matter, right? All right, so I just want to say this. I'm sorry in advance for all my controller players. You know, I know some of you guys might be a bit mad at me for saying this one, but, uh, and, and, and really, to be honest with you, I play on controller all the time, so this is not personal at all. But with that being said, one of the most hated aspects of this meta, guys, <laughs> is aim assist. And in all honesty, man, there's no denying that aim assist, at least for PC controller players, is extremely overpowered. Oh, what? Controller player? That is a controller player. So with that being said, I'm not here to bash controller players at all. Instead, we're going to be discussing how you can counter this controller meta that we're experiencing today. This video isn't only for mouse and keyboard players. These tips are relevant for everybody, all right, even including controller players. So no matter what platform and input you play on, these tips are going to help you guys out. But real fast. All right, so before we properly begin, if you want to take the next step to becoming a pro Fortnite player, check out ProGuys.com, where we have the guides and courses to help you guys be like Mongrel, man, Lechi, Benji, you know, and really like 24-7 on-demand coaching from some pro players to help you guys with whatever you need to improve on. And with that said, let's begin with the first tip. La 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 la. La la. What's going on guys? It's about that time, ladies and gentlemen around the world. It's time to scream this out. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that guys? Come on, it's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. I'm feeling really comfortable right now. All right, guys, so our first tip is really to understand like the importance of momentum in fights. All right, so we've covered this, you know, a tad bit in other videos, but this fits especially well with this current meta. All right, as most of us already know, all right, being the aggressor and having the momentum going into a fight, you know, it almost just always results in a kill, right? Don't you feel good about yourself? You know, you got your confidence, you're in your flow, you know, there's no fear, and you're just able just to play without even thinking about it, right? At least for like high level players, especially in this meta, if you're, you know, the one getting W key. <laughs> Chances are you're going to be simply hopped on. So instead of just being the player hiding inside of a box, trying to avoid death, yo, be the aggressor, man. And the game is much fun to play when you do that anyway. You know, the thing a lot of people don't realize is that like when you're the aggressor, you have the total and complete control over the pace of the fight, right? You know, you're the one that can decide when to push, you know, when to back off, you know, how to approach the opponent. And all they can do is just sit there trying to counter what you're trying to do. So by giving yourself the moment, Momentum, you know, going into every single fight. Not only will you have a much lower chance of having your opponent jump into your box, but you'll also have way more flexibility in terms of just like how you approach different aspects of the fight. You know, you're gonna be able to decide when and how to push and retreat, but you'll also be able to control the pacing and how long the fight actually lasts. And with how common third partying is these days, especially, and how slow players tend to even play fights, making them last seemingly half the game and just getting you both killed to the storm, you know, being the aggressor, man, and having the momentum in fights is just way more important than ever. So whether you're the one getting the first shots off or if you need to start just cranking up to try and take the height and control the fight, try to always make sure, guys, that you're in control of the fight, at least whenever possible, you know, to reduce the risk of a 50-50 and then, you know, just have a super high chance of winning basically any engagement that you get into. Our second tip of this video is all about working around the mythic spots. Now, let me get like one thing straight here, okay? If you land at a mythic spot at your main drop, this doesn't really apply to you quite as much, but you know, it's still good information to have. And if you usually land at a location that is not a mythic spot, then this will 100% apply to you. All right, so we all know that the mythic weapons are pretty strong, right? In fact, most players who get mythic weapons are going to be inclined to run around and W key everybody in sight. I know I do. <laughs> 
you know, it's just the nature of any intentional OP weapon, right? And unless you want to fight a psycho with a mythic weapon in mid game, it's really important to work your loot routes, you know, your pathing way, you know, just to stay away from these mythic locations. To lower your risk of running into these psycho players who want nothing more than to hop into your box and just like tear you up, all right? Making you their 10 kill of the game. All right, so with that being said, you know, when you're developing and planning your early game loot paths and, you know, mid game routes to each possible zone, try to simply adjust your routes to just stay away from them, all right? Or at least just stay out of the way of the players who land at the mythic locations unless you have the confidence to fight them you know head on which you know would make you a bit of a psycho but whatever i'm not judging because i know i like to do it sometimes so you know one pretty simple example is a solo player who lands at the castle west of sweaty sands right if you land at this spot you know that the shark is just north of you and people will have a mythic scar and grappler so naturally you aren't going to rotate up north to the coral cove island to continue looting that is unless you're willing to risk your game in the process all right, so instead, guys, all right, check this out. You'd be better off like rotating south toward the cargo crates and fancy view to avoid the shark player and see yourself survive going into the mid game. So if you decide to land at a mythic spot, then keep doing what you do, man, for real. But if not, really focus on working on your loot routes to just stay away from those mythic spots and avoid getting sprayed to death. <laughs> Trust me, we know that isn't fun. I want to continue to play. I don't want to be back in the lobby. Okay, so another tip to counter in this minute is to start fishing more. Yeah, this is a pretty simple tip, but I really don't see enough people actually using this, you know? Like if you land at a spot with fishing holes nearby, you need to use them. All right, so think about all the times you've gotten pushed and, you know, hit hard where one flopper or a slurp fish would have just swayed the entire fight in your favor. So in this box fighting and 50-50 hybrid meta, all right, it's more helpful than ever, guys, to have a way to heal up basically instantly, yeah always that way like whenever you get beamed on you know and someone's about to push you whenever you get into someone's box fight and you know you, you you get hit hard with a pump or just somebody just sprays your bills like out of nowhere right and it damages you you're going to be able to heal up and just continue the fight like nothing ever happened this is why a ton of players you're going to see at the top of the leaderboards and the ones who really have the most consistent placement points are often the guys man who spend even just a minute of their game grabbing some fish and that way you know they're ready for any situation the game wants to throw at them So the next one may seem more like of a common sense tip, but whatever, okay? This genuinely makes a big difference if you do this a lot. This tip is to avoid bloom battles in 50-50s, okay? We're gonna discuss each of these in a bit of detail really, really fast, as, you know, they can have, you know, far different implications, and chances are that you might not realize some aspects of each. All right, so first up is to avoid bloom battles. All right, so a bloom battle, let's break it down, is really any time that you and an opponent are both looking straight at each other, right? Head on and just spraying your weapons. You Usually, you know, ARs from a distance, you know, hoping to hit a shot. The thing about this is, you know, a controller player will almost always have one better bloom and two less recoil than a mouse and keyboard player. A lot of people consider this unfair. I get it, uh, but that's just the way it is. That being said, playing for bloom battles is a strategy a lot of controller players make, right? Both skilled and unskilled, and it gives themselves an edge because they know that almost every single time they're gonna get more damage off on you than you on them. And in terms of 50-50s, this is like a little bit simpler, right? Unless you have a good tier aim. If you ever jump into someone's box or just open an editor build, you know, where you're fully exposed while you both have the same or similar health, it's a 50-50. And well, you know, unless you're like a legend at aiming, you know, as I just said, you're probably gonna end up losing a fair bit of these 50-50s, right? So you might win a few of them and you, you know, you get on a hot streak, you're feeling good about yourself, I get it. But eventually someone's either, you know, gonna hit a luckier shot or just out aim you and just mess you up, especially someone who's on controller. Because linear and exponential aim assists are both so much more OP and super short range. However, you know, I like to clear something up real quick, all right? If you have your opponent super low in health or you just beam them pretty hard and have a big advantage in the fight, it may be acceptable to jump into someone's box or just 50-50 them. It's definitely not the safest option, I would say, nor the most optimal, but you know, if you're really trying to finish the right way and just quickly, you know, get through them, it could work. You just gotta be smart. All right, guys, so finally, the fifth tip of this video is to focus on practicing your aim. Whew. I know that's everybody's favorite word, practice. Mine is bunch of crunch. <laughs> You know, while there are steps that, you know, you can take to counter the 50-50 controller meta, it's just not possible, guys, to completely avoid running into a 50-50 unless you simply just don't play the game. Yeah, that's the only way. And obviously, you know, we're not going to add that to the list, right? 
Okay, if you aren't training your aim already, then you're falling behind the curve. Especially in a meta like this, practicing your aim consistently is gonna give you guys that little edge you might need in those 50-50 fights you're gonna run into. If you play on mouse and keyboard and have Kovacs Aim Trainer, yo, take advantage, please. Don't even worry for a second because I'm here to help you guys out, all right? The motivation guy is here. And if you don't and you play on PC with, you know, mouse and keyboard, you're seriously missing out, man. So you can get Kovacs for just 10 bucks on this stream store, right? Which may seem like a lot of money, especially if you don't have a job, I get it. But if you're serious about Fortnite and you put in the time to practice your aim with it, yo, it's gonna pay dividends for you, for real. You know, a few different scenarios, you know, you Kovac grinders can use to practice your close range SMG and shotgun aim include, okay, six tile jumbo frenzy, jumbo tile frenzy, close long strafes invincible, bounce 180 large, and vertical long strafes. And if you play on controller or, you know, you get Kovacs for any reason, here are a few in-game aim training maps that you guys can try out. All right, so we're going to put in the names and the codes on the screen. Here we go. All right, guys, so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a quick recap and go over everything we just discussed. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, guys, so first up was the importance of momentum, where we discuss why it is so darn important for you to be the aggressor in your fights, all right? It allows you guys to control the pace of the fight, you know, have more opportunities and flexibility with what you're doing during the fight. And it really just heavily reduces the risk of you getting jumped on in a 50-50, right? This is a super simple trick that allows you to counter almost the worst aspects of this meta. All right, guys, so second up is avoiding mythic spots on your loot routes and rotations. All right, so there's no doubt in my mind that a lot of us don't want to run into players who land at the mythic spots and have those OP weapons. So to keep control of this and run into those cycle players a bit less often, focus on developing your loot route and rotations to avoid these spots and the common places that these players with the mythic weapons rotate to. While this isn't like totally like foolproof or anything like that, it's definitely going to help you guys, you know, run into them less often. All right, guys, third up is fishing. Yeah, get those fish bones out. Fishing really helps you because it basically allows you to be ready for anything, right? You could even get beam to like one HP and within four seconds, you can be back up to 200 just like that. Assuming you had the fish for it. Honestly, you know, especially in this W key and box fighting meta, having fish in your inventory, yo, that's going to give you guys a giant edge and not only every single fight, but it's also going to be a great tool for you in the end game. Okay, so then, you know, a bit of common sense here, yet still an extremely common issue is avoiding bloom battles in 50-50s. All right, so we can sum this up into one simple sentence. If you aren't completely sure it's going to work, think twice. Bloom battles in 50-50s, especially those against controller players or just players, you know, who have good aim overall, are just, just way more often than not, like, they're going to result in a tough situation. So think twice, guys, before you take one of them and try to avoid doing so unless you absolutely have to. And finally, guys, our last tip is to focus on training your aim consistently. Practice, practice, practice. Because it's really inevitable that occasionally you're gonna run into a 50-50 or a bloom battle. And you know, you're gonna have to just make it work, right? So, you know, if you have really good aim, regardless of what platform or input you play on, your chances will increase a ton to win these fights. While nothing is completely guaranteed, it's definitely gonna help you guys a bunch, like a bunch of crunch, not only in terms of 50-50s, but it's also gonna improve almost every other aspect of your game as well. So really, guys, Try to focus on training your aim as much as possible, all right? All right, guys. Once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I hope you were inspired today to keep going, man, to keep practicing, to keep training, to go after your dreams. Go after your dreams and let nothing stop you. So, with that said, guys, make sure to connect with me on my Insta at Your Motivation Guy. We appreciate all you guys checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, consider dropping a like, you know, for this video and maybe subscribe as well. We really like to see you a lot more, man. We got so much going on here, all right? So, like, subscribe subscribe, share with your friends, get it out there because we're doing our thing. And if you want to support us even further, then consider using creator code ProGuys in the item shop. It just really helps us out a ton. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Peace.